Welcome to Econland, the macroeconomic simulation game and learning platform. The learning objective of Econland is to improve understanding of how an economy works and to see how monetary and fiscal policy decisions impact economic outcomes. By playing Econland, students of different levels learn to work with economic models and improve their analytical and critical thinking skills. Econland can be used to support all types of macroeconomics courses at high schools, colleges, and universities, as well as at companies and government organizations. Let's show you how to use Econland. After logging in, students see a game info page that gives them information about the game. The first part provides an overview. The second part show how to play Econland. We'll show you how to play by taking you through the various screens. When a student has reviewed the game info page, the game can begin. At the start, students choose a scenario for the level and volatility of world economic growth. Beginning players are advised to choose the base case scenario. Later on, they may try the roller coaster or stagnation scenarios, which are a bit more challenging. After choosing a scenario, students go through an analyze, decide, and review cycle for a period of seven years. Each year is equivalent to one round in the game. Each year, a new world economic forecast is presented. This forecast and the Econland Consumer Confidence Index are summarized in a weather forecast picture. Students need to take this information into account when making decisions. A total of four decisions need to be made in each round. One monetary policy decision in the form of interest rates and three fiscal policy decisions related to the income tax rate, corporate tax rate, and government expenditure. Decisions need to be made in order to have a good outcomes in each of Econland's four results areas. GDP growth, the unemployment rate, the inflation rate, and the budget deficit. Students will use their knowledge from their economics course to analyze how their decisions have an impact on key economic outcomes. Players get an approval rating from their population based on how well they do in each area, as shown in the table. GDP growth needs to be as high as possible. Unemployment needs to be low. Inflation should also be low, but not negative. Negative inflation or deflation is very destabilizing for an economy. Finally, the budget deficit, measured as a percentage of GDP, should also not be too high. Players can get up to 25 points for each of the four result areas, leading to a maximum total score of 100 points in each round. These points represent the approval rating that the population of the country gives for the economic policy decisions that have been made. The aim of the game is to end up with the highest average approval rating after seven years. After submitting their decisions, players get to see their results. They see the values for each of the four results areas and can easily see where they scored 0, 10, or 25 points by checking the smileys on top of each graph. The results are summarized in the approval rating for the year and the average approval rating for the game for all the years played until now. The policy advisor gives feedback based on the player's decisions and results. The feedback is useful when making decisions for the next round. In addition to the summary results, there is the reports page which gives useful information on how the results have been obtained. Table 1 shows the components of GDP and translates nominal GDP into real GDP. Table 2 shows other economic data that help to explain the results. Table 3 summarizes the data on the economic environment, the decisions taken, and the results obtained for all the rounds played in the game so far. Once this information has been reviewed, the player can move to the next round, see the world economic forecast for the next year, and make new decisions. This cycle is repeated for seven years. When the game is finished, the student results are kept and become visible to the student and the instructor. Students may then play the game again and can change the scenario for world economic growth if they wish. While playing the game, students can consult the macroeconomics section of the game to read about aggregate demand and supply and monetary and fiscal policy. The glossary provides an explanation of each of the economic concepts used in the game in the way that is both relevant to Econland and to a macroeconomics course. Students also have access to a range of other learning resources. There are several videos that explain the topics covered in the game. A weekly online economics newspaper has global economics news that shows how the topics in an economics course relate to the real world. 
an online discussion forum allows people to ask questions and find answers related to the study of economics. There is also a quiz that practices the topics covered in Econland. Each time a student takes the quiz, 10 questions get randomly selected from a test bank. Altogether, Econland provides a simulation game and a learning platform that consolidates all the main components of an introductory macroeconomics course. It can be tailored to students of different levels to suit everyone's learning needs.